All right, so in this video, we're going to use the fundamental identities we recently learned uh, to write one tangent or one trig function in terms of another, okay? So we had those three reciprocal uh, relationships, sine and cosecant are uh, reciprocals, cosine and secant are reciprocals, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, okay? We had the two quotient identities, tangent equals sine over cosine, and cotangent equals cosine over sine. And then we had the three Pythagorean identities, okay? Sine squared, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, okay? One plus tangent squared equals secant squared, and one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared, all right? So let's give example one here a try. In example one, we wanna write cosecant of theta in terms of cotangent of theta, and we know that theta is in quadrant two, okay? Now, lucky for us, there is an identity, okay, the Pythagorean identity that I just listed that has both cosecant and cotangent of theta in there and nothing else, okay? So we're going to use that Pythagorean identity, and we're going to solve that Pythagorean identity for cosecant, and that will allow us to write cosecant of theta in terms of cotangent of theta, okay? So let's do that. So... I went ahead and rearranged this. I, I like cosecant squared being on the left side here. So it's cosecant squared of theta equals 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. And again, I want to solve for cosecant of theta. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I get cosecant of theta equals either plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. Okay? And this is where the fact that we're in quadrant 2 comes to play. All right? In quadrant 2... Sine and cosecant are positive. So because sine and cosecant are positive and we're in quadrant two, then that means I want the positive root. Okay, we're in quadrant two. Cosecant has to be positive. So this plus or minus here, I'm going to choose the positive root. So therefore, I can say that cosecant of theta written in terms of cotangent of theta equals the square root of one plus cotangent squared of theta. Okay. If necessary, we could use this to substitute this in for cosecant, and it would make it, make it easier for us uh, to maybe simplify something down the line, okay? So that's how you write cosecant in terms of cotangent, okay? Let's move on to example two. In example two, uh, we want to write tangent of t in terms of cosine of t, and we know that the terminal point there is in quadrant three, okay? Uh, again, that's going to help us with our sign when we have to determine our sign uh, when we get towards the end, okay? So, there is no identity that just has tangent and cosine in it. So I'm going to actually have to go through a couple of different identities here uh, to make this happen. So one thing I can do is I can use that quotient identity, tangent of t equals sine of t over cosine of t, and I want to, uh, it's going to force us to write sine in terms of cosine, okay? So that means I need to use a different identity before I can come back to this, okay? So there is an identity that has both sine and cosine in it, okay? And when I solve for sine and I get sine in terms of cosine, then I can use the substitution property and come plug this right back in here. And then I would have an equation that would say tangent of t equals to something uh, relative to cosine in the numerator over cosine in the denominator, okay? So there's a couple ways you could do this, but this is the way we're going to attack this problem here, okay? So let's use that Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared, so we can write sine in terms of cosine first, and then we'll go back to this quotient identity uh, for our last step, okay? So uh, let's solve for sine. So first thing I want to do is I want to move cosine to the other side, so sine of squared or sine squared of t equals 1 minus cosine squared of t. Now I want to take the square root of both sides. So sine t is either going to be plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine squared of t. Okay? Well, we're in quadrant 3. Okay? In quadrant 3, sine has to be negative. Sine is only positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Okay? So I want the negative root. So therefore, I know that the sine of t equals the negative square root of 1 minus cosine squared of t. Okay, now we're going to go back to our quotient identity here, and we're going to substitute. Now I know what sine of t is. I'm going to substitute that into the numerator here, and then I would only have cosine on the right side of my equation here. 
okay? So let's go back to our quotient identity. I'm gonna replace sine with what I know it to be equal to. This is what sine is equal to. So I can substitute that into the numerator. And I've solved for tangent, and I've only got cosine on the other side, okay? So tangent of t equals then the negative square root of one minus cosine squared, all that over cosine of t, okay? And that's how you write trig functions in terms of another um, if you know what quadrant uh, the terminal point is in.